right, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be my Friday Reads for Friday, June 16th, <laughs> 2023. Um, and in my Friday Reads videos, I share how my reading has been going, including what I finished, what I've started, and anything interesting I'm carrying over week to week. Um, I was doing the weekly wrap-ups and TBRs um, after the continuing reading, continuing reading, currently reading challenge, but I think Friday Reads works a little bit better for me, and so I think I'm going to come back to it. I'm still starting to, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best combination of videos and best time to film and all that stuff. Um, so I think Friday Reads is going to be where it's at. Um, I have loved, I really enjoy doing Friday Reads. I've been doing them, I think, since 2014. Um, and, uh, and I, I, wow, I haven't watched one of those videos in a long time. And I don't know if I, I know that initially the idea with Friday Reads was that you're supposed to share what you're reading up on the upcoming weekend. That's not quite what I do. It's more of a wrap up, check in, catch up, chit chat. And uh, so yeah, let's get started. Do all of those things. And as always, starting with the finishes. I only have one big finish this week and it's not even like it's, I only have one well, we'll start with it. Anyway, so I did finish the series Falling Drowning by Yuko Inari. This is a manga series, a shoujo series, three volume series, and it follows a girl who has, um, is in high school. She has a friend that she's been friends with a long time and trying to, and she's trying to figure out if she has feelings for him because he has expressed that he has feelings for her. Um, and at the same time, someone, a new guy comes to school and seems really surly. So she tries to befriend him and, you know, and then there's some mystery involved and there's um, uh, the use of the amnesia trope. Um, and overall, I, I really enjoyed the series. I think it was just sort of like the right thing at the right time. Um, I enjoyed the sort of, although it's quite steeped in emotions, um, it, it has a lot of I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about it. I think it feels kind of open-hearted to me in some ways. Um, and, but I don't know. I, and to be honest, I just, I'm a little, um, it's not like I, I guess I'm not, maybe I think I don't like shoujo. Um, but this one was, had sort of two concurrent stories of the sort of relationships and feelings and the development of that. And then also this sort of, mystery-ish story with the amnesia like the sort of trying to you know because um trying to figure out or remember what happened and I'm actually to be honest not exactly sure like I'm sure what the reader knows but I'm not actually sure what all the characters know which is a bit weird but it doesn't for me that that wasn't a, a deal breaker I enjoyed the character development and the emotional journey and um and I was I did think it was nice that they brought together the story like the mystery elements were brought together it's not mystery per se it's because it's not they're not trying to solve a mystery it's just the amnesia thing um but but I I was a little surprised at the direction like for not the direction but um for where it ended for the the relationship stuff I was a little surprised that that the of the not the choice made the, but just I was like I thought it would be different so I was surprised I guess that's what surprise means different than expected right <laughs> not what you expect is a surprise but not it wasn't like a twist or anything like that it was just like oh so but I felt like fine with like I felt like they brought a good conclusion to the mystery element so I was okay with the relationship element being a bit not not exactly you know, what I expected. But overall, it was just sort of like the right tone, the right pace, the right feels. And it was quite emotional, like, um, and, and I really enjoyed it. So and but at, and one more series finished at three volumes, I just, you know, <laughs> I don't finish, I don't feel like I'm finishing a lot. So that felt like a big win. So that was the big finish, because the only other book I finished this week was, and I don't even know how to the, say, uh, uh, I don't even know what all of these words are. So, L'Incorab, The Secret de Bar Noir um, by 
Well, it's drawings by Enzo, but the story is Frank. Frank Sylvester. So that's there. Illustrations by Enzo. So this is one of the ones I got at the library. And it's a kid's book. And it's en français. And I actually felt like with this one, because I, I bought a bunch. Mostly I want them for the art and the drawings and stuff. Um, but, oh, and this one's got some a pirate story, a pirate type story. Oh, it's pretty dark. Um, but this one I would say, I actually felt like I understood the, um, I was gonna say dialogue. Um, I understood the words a lot more than some of the other French ones that I've read. Now, I have no idea if I am understanding them. <laughs> So, and these, I like to read them, I mark, them, but on Goodreads, I just simply mark them as read. I don't mark them as rated because I'm mostly just looking at the pictures, trying to understand the story and interpreting it. So, I mean, so that's an owned and read book <laughs> goal, check mark. Um, but, um, and Canadian, it's also Canadian. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, so I don't, like, <laughs> I'll take any win that I can get at this point because my reading has been a little, has been only okay at best and uh, I'm just trying to keep engaged <laughs> and keep the habit up because honestly I have not been reading as much and I don't know if that's just like the time of year or after the big like push of the currently reading challenge if it always sort of quiets um, or if something else is going on. So I'm just trying to stick to the habit. So anyway, I did start a few things this week. Some of them I mentioned in my TBR. I had two buddy reads to start this week, including Night of Darkness by Kinley McGregor. This is also aka Sherilyn Kenyon. So this is the second in the Lords of Avalon series. It is also part of the Dark Hunter series. Um, and this one is an Arthurian paranormal romance. Um, and I'm reading this with Anita from Anita Reads. I will leave her channel up above and down below. And it is, um, yeah, so this one follows, uh, I actually am really enjoying this one uh, much more than the first one, which was very, 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 very dark. And this one is still dark. It's sort of set in a sort of space that got sort of lost in time. Um, and uh, the protagon the two protagonists, one is the guy is like, I don't know, I can't remember the term that they use. It's some kind of Knight of the Round Table, Keeper of, Keeper of the Holy Grail, something like that. He's one of several people that are uh, keeping the Holy Grail safe. Uh, and he does have magical abilities. Um, and the it's a male-female romance, and the woman in it was a princess who made a bad bargain <laughs> and now is basically in this sort of lost time space place and um, and uh, is sort of lost all of her power station and beauty. Now, I'm interested to see how it plays out because I think often conversations about beauty can be a little challenging um and I, I i'm always curious as to how they're going to be handled but generally in romance i feel like it's pretty clear what the the i would be i you know at this point i've only read a couple chapters i have a very strong sense of what where that storyline is like what that storyline is going to go but anyway um so anyway, but overall, I'm enjoying it a lot more than the first one um, in this sort of sub-series. It has a much more, uh, I like the setting. It's interesting um, and engaging, and I'm curious to see where it's going to go. But Early Days only only just started, so looking forward to reading more of that. And then I also am, have started A Small Zombie Problem by K.G. Campbell. This one I'm reading with Izzy and Kay Kelly. Um, the live show will be on Izzy's channel on June, Thursday, June 29th at 7 p.m. So this is a middle grade illustrated book about a boy um, who lives with his aunt and they are so, uh, sort of shut-ins and he creates these dolls to keep him company. I'm still, again, early stages with this one. Um, I have a heart. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm not sure what, where or when the zombies are going to happen though. I feel like that's, I don't know if I'm just, 
if it's too early? I don't know. The series is zombie problems, so I imagine, I imagine there's going to be zombies, but so far no zombies. There's just been butterflies, but no zombies. So there's the thing about butterflies, I don't know. It is, I, it is quite, I am enjoying it. Um, I haven't read a book like this for a while, um, and uh, I don't know how, to, like, because it is, it has a light speculative element, but it mostly feels like sort of, you know, everyday-ish, semi-rural, not at a time where there's less technology than now, you know, TVs, yes, but not cell phones, and I don't know often, but like more like 50s, I don't know, and I don't know if it's historically set, because there's shut-ins, but there's definitely no internet, so... I don't, I don't know. I'll be curious to see where it goes. I don't, like, sort of that, like, Ray Bradbury sort of, but not, that's, not the speculative elements nowhere near those, but that sort of time period, like, pre-technology, pre the technology we use every day now. Anyway, I'll be curious to see where it goes. Um, I find it quite um, cute uh, so far, so not totally. There's some, there's some tough stuff, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So that's what I've started. I also accidentally started... <laughs> the Secret of the Redgate Farm by Carolyn Keene. This is the sixth in the Nancy Drew Yellow Spine series. I, so this one, because I was looking at my Goodreads and I was like, wow, my numbers are off. How come they're off? Why? I knew I was starting two things, but they're off. And it's because I started this. And I started this because I feel like I need, for me, it's helpful to have something that's a bit of an easy read, um, something that's not too many pages, so it's not going to get stuck indefinitely on my currently reading. And previously, this would have been something like along the lines of Goosebumps or even Benicula, and I forgot I had one more Benicula to read. And I don't, I'm not loving this one. There's some outdated language in this, and it just sort of bothers me every time it comes up, and it comes up again and again, and it came up again and again in the last one that I read. And I I understand these are these were written <laughs> like 90 years ago at this point, but it's still like, you know, it doesn't make for a pleasant, easy reading experience, which is what I am looking for. So I am on the lookout for something that sort of fits this bill. And I don't know whether I should go like a, a couple of the other options I thought of are the, the, the Borrowers series. I have read the first in the Borrowers series by Mary Norton, or maybe there's a Roswell High series that is like less than 200 page books that was the tv series roswald was made into now i haven't finished the reboot of roswald and i just need the last season to watch so i kind of want to do that first but both of those the borrowers and roswald are on um scribd and for me it would be really helpful to have a series on scribd because this is from the library and i don't mind reading the nancy drew out of, out of sequence i don't care there's usually something available but there are also holds because they don't have tons of copies i think they might have only like one or two copy of each of the titles so and some of them are on scribd too um so i don't know anyway so i read that and i'm like whoops i didn't mean to read that but i do having something that's an easy read is on my ideal 20 currently reading titles. So although it does increase my currently reading on the whole, it actually does have a slot. So I'm trying not to be too like eh, about it, but I'm a little eh, about it. So um, I am also continuing to read Madly Deeply, the Alan Rickman uh, diaries. I haven't read very much and I think my hold in my library board will expire either this week or mid next week. And I just feel I'm just like, I want to get to the end of this, the year I'm reading and I'm enjoying it, but I just, I read so little of it and I don't know if that's, I don't know anyway. So that's frustrating, but it's really good. It was what it, he went to, it, there was, it was the Oscars, the year of, oh, I can't remember. He talk, you know, he's just like some of the, it doesn't feel like name dropping because he just, I feel like he's just talking about the people he knows and works with. Right. But those people are like Kate Winslet and Ian McKellen. And I'm like, and like when he was talking about the Oscars, I'm like, I remember that year. And like, so there's, there's something nice about that. And, um, so, but I haven't, been, I haven't read a lot of it this week. I also am continuing to read Mammals, uh, the Dorling Kindersley uh, handbook, um, and I am in the last section, Even Toad Ungulates. So, uh, 
camels. I can't remember if camels are even or odd toed, but now I'm reading about deer. So I'm in the last section. I have, I think, about 60 pages left. So somewhere, maybe this month will be the month that I finish mammals. I do want to lightly finish four titles a month um, from my currently reading from May. And I think I finished one. So I need to finish three more and I mean, that's not looking great. But one option is I did read a little bit of A Just of God by Margaret Lawrence last week. And I did, I do think I might be able to finish this by the end of June. I have about 70 pages, 70 or 80 pages left. And then there's the afterword by Margaret Atwood. So um, it's really good, but I didn't read much of it. And I didn't read any of Story of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. I didn't get to the story. I can't, I was, I was going back and forth whether I should just put this again on my TV or next week, but I think what I'm going to do instead, because sometimes I find that that just sort of stalls the energy. So I'm going to switch to the Conan the Barbarian stories, um, bind up. And the next story I have to read is Beyond the Black River, which is the 15th in the series. Um, it's about 90 pages. It probably will take me two weeks. But overall, I have five five more titles from the Conan the Barbarian series that I want to read for a total of like 600 pages. So I need to make progress on that if I'm going to finish by my goal of Halloween. So we'll see how things go. Um, so overall, I have to say, as you can probably tell by my like, is that I'm a little like, not happy with how little I'm reading. Um, I'm a little flummoxed by it as well. Um, I just haven't been getting to it. And I thought with the currently reading challenge, I really would have really created and cultivated that habit of like getting to my reading every day or five days a week. And I just, I just been like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I just, and I'm just like, what am I doing? And it's, I have read every day. I just haven't, read a lot and I haven't read like my assigned reading. I just did not do well at that. And I don't know what contributed to that. And I also, again, like, as I said earlier, I don't know if this is just like after doing the currently reading challenge and being super focused for a very, you know, intense period of time afterwards, it's like, woohoo, like, I don't, I don't have to do it anymore. Or I don't know. <laughs> or if it's just that, you know, it's summer-ish, and so I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like I have those seasonal ups and downs. I don't know what's going on, but I haven't gotten to my reading very much, and so, yeah, and I did, um, I did, because I finished Falling, Drowning, I am going back to the Wand Dance series uh, for manga, and this one's about a teen boy who joins his school's dance team and so I started reading the second volume of that I can't I think I can't remember if it's complete it might be complete I don't know if my library has all of them but that's the manga that I'm reading right now and I'm continuing to read Yusagi Yohimbo and Phoebe and her unicorn which I've been reading all year well Yusagi Yohimbo I've been reading since like 2019 so <laughs> um, but Phoebe and her unicorn I'm getting actually pretty close I'm reading Unicornado this time I think I, I think I jumped ahead one because that was what was available. But I'm getting close to the end of that. That's a comics uh, series about a girl who befriends a unicorn. And I really like it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I, I guess I'm sort of up and down on whether I how much thought or challenge or worry I should spend on the fact that I'm not reading as much. Like, is it just like, yeah, that happens? Just whatever? Or, you know, should I make more of an effort? I'm not feel, feeling a bit ambivalent, so I don't think I'm going to be making more of an effort. I don't know. And it also is still sort of like early in the month, so I feel like, yeah, I'll get to it later. <laughs> That's just like not really my way, but I think sometimes it happens. Anyway, um, in terms of videos, I am hoping to film a film update of the movies that I've watched and my progress on my film goals. I do also have a bunch of TV um, shows that I haven't talked about in ages. I haven't done any TV musings in ages. So I have at least three, maybe five videos about TV shows that I have seen or got up to date with or finished, like completely finished or close to completely finished or I'm considering it complete. So hopefully those will come down um, probably a bit later. I have to sort of figure out how I want to structure those in terms of what I like want to say like how I want the videos to 
to be. Um, so, but hopefully the film update will come out later this weekend or early next week. So fingers crossed on that one. So yeah, there's my bit of my rambly like Friday reads. I do, I am happy to get back to Friday reads. I do think that that works for me better on a sort of general week to week basis. And as I said, I've been doing them for like years, like 2014. It's such a staple. Um, but I also feel like it doesn't pull tons of traction, like outside the week it gets released but I don't I'm not worried too much about that like and I'm not worried if people can't see each and every one of them I feel like it's just a nice way to catch up like you know hang out with friends at the end of the week and just catch up chit chat that kind of stuff and um and so that's sort of my like philosophy behind them and so um yeah and so I hope that it was a good to chat catch up update feel free to let me know how you're doing do you find that you get sort of I don't know if I'm in a reading slump I don't think that's what it is but do you find you have waves of like when you're like read a lot more and then read less do you have techniques to combat that or do you just be like hey that's how that week was I think I think I might need to have some more relaxed energy on that um it's not generally my way but yeah let me know how your reading goes do you have those waves of energy uh, or volume and um do you just let it lie work to combat it or have another approach i would love to hear your thoughts and i would love to hear how your reading has been going and i'll be back with another video soon thanks for watching